Hi there, Kyle Hadwin here at uh, Traveland RV in Langley. Today we are doing a walkthrough on a Grand Design Imagine 22 MLE sitting here behind me. Uh, our most popular floor plan at the RV show, the Early Bird RV show this year. We have lots of customers waiting for theirs to arrive, so I thought it would be a good time to do a walkthrough on one. If you have questions uh, after you receive this, feel free to let our parts department know and we can answer any specific questions that you have. Uh, for your walkthrough. So we're going to start right up front here in the trailer. We're going to do outside. Uh, we are going to go counterclockwise around the outside of the unit and then we'll do the same on the inside of the unit. So right up front you have your power tongue jack, extend and retract, pretty simple buttons there for you and you just have a docking light here for outside at night. Uh, if you do have to do some hitching at night it puts out enough light to do that. If your jack ever is not working for you, uh, simplest thing to do is a hand crank. I've already put it up here for you. You can simply crank your jack up and down. So if the battery is dead on your trailer because it is an electric jack, you can manually crank your jack up and down. There is a rubber plug that fits where that goes. Make sure that that is seated in there tightly. Otherwise you will get water in the top of your jack. And if that happens, it will cease to operate. Next we have your propane tanks here. I'm gonna show you two ways to get at your propane tanks. The hardest one is the one that I'm doing right now with these little spinny knobs, okay? So if you do that, this is just if you need to open and close your tanks simply, easily, that's all you have to do. Otherwise, you're just gonna pull the entire tank cover off if you're removing your tanks for any reason. It is a good snug fit for a reason. Pro tip number one, there'll be a lot of pro tips today. Uh, make sure you remove the rubber bungee before you try to do what I just did. It does come with a rubber bungee that keeps it strapped around the frame. See how much easier that was? Okay, so you have two 20 pound propane tanks and in the middle you have an auto changeover regulator. So all the gas going to your appliances inside the coach are regulated. What you're gonna do is operate one tank open the way that this valve right here is pointing to, that is the tank that it is using. What will happen is if you have both tanks open, when this tank runs dry, it will automatically start pulling propane from this side. Kyle's pro tip number two is always just run one tank at a time. Even though you have an auto changeover regulator, what will happen to you is you could run out of propane in the middle of the night, in the middle of winter when you need your furnace the most. What happens is if you only run one tank, you run one dry, you know you have to go refill that one, open the second one. I unfortunately do not have a trailer that is ready right now, but Traveland supplies a 12 volt dual purpose battery. It'll sit up here on the front A-frame. Now what I wanted to explain with the battery is they are serviceable batteries, so you do have to make sure that you add, uh, check the water levels in the battery and add distilled water as needed. You also have space for two six volt batteries. So if you are doing a lot of dry camping, a good upgrade is two six volts. Uh, it will give you about three times the battery life of one 12 volt battery. So um, check with the parts department on the cost of that, but two six volts is highly recommended if you're gonna be doing some dry camping. You have an inline fuse right up front. Now, if your jack isn't working or something isn't working in your coach, this is always a good place to check that inline fuse right up front. As I said, we'll work our way around the exterior of the trailer counterclockwise. Sorry I spent so long up front, but you have a Furion specific uh, plug-in for solar. That'd be a portable solar panel if you wanted to do that. Check with the parts department on those. This is probably the, one of the most important things outside, so we'll spend a few minutes here. This is your docking station. Um, this is basically where you're going to do a lot of your water hookups. Battery disconnect is in here, cable, power, etc. So first things, top left hand corner is just a power box. You have a couple of 110 outlets. 110 outlets only work when you're plugged into shore power or generator, something providing 110 volt electricity. Your battery does provides 12 volt DC. So those do not work off of your battery. Right here you have a battery disconnect. Can just flip it off. I pull the pin so I know it's for sure disconnected. If you're gonna be leaving it for any time more than basically three days, I would disconnect my battery because there is a hardwired LP and carbon monoxide detector inside that will continue to run off of the battery. 
Your fresh water connection is right here. They give you a little spot right here to run the hose up through so that you can keep the compartment door locked and closed. Uh, you're going to hook your, hot, or your fresh water into here. Always using a water pressure regulator. Uh, those are sold in the parts department as well. If you've owned a trailer before, you probably already have one. Make sure you're using a freshwater drinking hose and a water pressure regulator when you're hooked up to the city water connection. Now in this trailer, it is uh, also have, uh, when you're hooked up to your city water connection, you can actually still fill your fresh water tank. And that's just a switching valve right there. So when it's in the up position, that's gonna fill your fresh tank. Down position, that's gonna be your uh, pressurized city water source. Just turn the tap on, get water. You have uh, portable satellite and cable connections as well, and your outside shower, hot and cold. It is just a sprayer nozzle, uh, and it is just a quick connect for that to remove that from there. So, Stabilizer jacks on all four corners. There is four stabilizer jacks. I say stabilizer jacks and not leveling jacks because they are made for stabilizing the coach only. So what you're gonna do is to get to your campsite and get level. First thing that you're gonna do is survey your site. When you get to your site, check it out, see if you're gonna have a bit of a side to side. If you do, you're gonna use wood blocks, leveling blocks, Lego blocks, whatever you wanna use to get your coach level side to side. And that's just by backing underneath something on one side or the other. You do have the power tongue jack to get you level from front to back, so that you're level front to back. And then at that point only are you gonna drop your stabilizer jacks. Once the stabilizer jacks get to the ground, stop cranking. It's just so that it doesn't feel like you're on a boat, uh, so that you're comfortable. And again, it's not all wavy inside your unit. If you do start to lift the corners of your units with it, you could start playing with the frame and you'll also eventually wear down the jacks and break them. So stabilizer jacks only. We got your slide out here. Uh, Pretty simple, easy operation. It is electric, it's easy inside, no old manual crank or anything like that. But a few things that I do always talk about is you have to make sure that your rubber is treated. You have seals. It's hard to pick at the brand new ones. Oh, there we go, got a little bit of it. Uh, so that is your rubber slide seal. That's called a swipe seal. And what that is gonna do is it's gonna kind of wipe down your wall as it comes. It doesn't get everything, but it does a pretty good job. But you do wanna keep that lubricated. There is, uh, a slide spray for that, uh, which is also sold in the parts department. So make sure that uh, you check in. It's about a once a year type thing. Um, just make sure that they stay lubricated. We all know if rubber dries out, it starts to crack and break and things like that. So I'm at the outside fridge. And the reason I pull this off is there is a few good things inside of here, but nothing too crazy. So number one is, Pro tip number three, if your fridge ever isn't working, chances are it's just not plugged in, which ours actually wasn't. So we would have tried to turn our fridge onto 110, would have realized, said, why isn't it going on 110? Come back out here, might just be unplugged. So always check that first. Also come in here to clean out any debris, things like that. It is an open vented system. It needs to be for the heat that the fridge creates. So if that happens, just come in here, see, this is a fresh trailer from Indiana. We haven't had detail in here yet. So you do get some debris, road debris, things like that in here. So just pop it off a couple times a year, clean it out, give it a good vacuum. Uh, and that's your fridge. Otherwise, everything for your fridge will be done inside. To keep this closed and make sure it's locked, you just put that back on, give the tab a twist until it's horizontal. You don't usually have to deal with the upper one, but again, uh, to give it a good clean out every once in a while is not a bad idea. This is your microwave uh, hood fan vent. And what that's gonna do is while you're cooking and you're running the fan, it's actually gonna vent the everything outside. Now you do want to make sure that while you're traveling that it is tucked in. And the reason being is plastic flapping around the, in the wind while you're driving down the road doesn't work very well. Eventually it will peel off and break itself. Uh, so have it tucked in while you're driving, traveling. Uh, when you are gonna use your uh, hood fan, make sure that you do uh, pop the tabs, let it open so that it actually does vent outside. Right down here, we'll get, uh, we'll get low here, is your sewer outlet. 
So your sewer outlet, Travel Land provides you with a 20 foot uh, sewer hose. Uh, it hooks right onto this end connector right here. I don't have a sewer hose with me today, so I can't show you. A little bit of antifreeze left over. So sewer hose connects right onto here. You have one big three inch pipe here and an inch and a half pipe here that you can see. Uh, okay, so your black tank is your toilet only tank. So uh, everything that is goes down the toilet will go down and sit in your black tank. Always recommend uh, every time you empty the tank that you refill it with a little bit of water and a couple of porta packs. Uh, you can use liquid or you can use the little gel packs. But you should always have something in your tank. It's just going to help keep the uh, smells down um, and also keep the toilet paper uh, digesting uh, easier uh, so that it doesn't clog up and gum up your sensors. Uh, so the other tank that you have, I don't know why I already dumped that, lowered that, but uh, the other tank that you have is your gray tank. So that's going to be your kitchen sink and your bathroom sink and your shower. And we call that gray water and that's going to go down into your gray tank. Um, gray tank, same thing, there is chemicals that you should be putting down there and every time you drain it, you should put a little bit of water into it and one of the pucks or a little bit of liquid, again, just is going to help with the smells, believe it or not. Um, the gray tank is usually the one that ends up with the, uh, the foulest smell coming out of it. So. Uh, even though it's much cleaner water. When you go to empty your tanks, uh, I always recommend them getting at least a half full to two thirds full before you empty them. They're very long, flat tanks. Uh, so you do need some pressure for them to drain out. It is just a gravity drain. So you are gonna go ahead and pull this black valve. Hopefully there's nothing in there. Uh, so you're gonna go ahead and pull that black valve and you're gonna let all the contents drain out. You have already hooked up your 20 foot sewer hose provided by Traveland, I hope. We're not just gonna empty that out on the ground. Uh, and then it's down into your sewer outlet. Uh, you're gonna do that at campgrounds with sewer outlets. Uh, lots of rest stops do have uh, sanding stations as well and some gas stations, especially in the States, do as well. Once you've emptied your black, you're gonna go ahead and empty your gray tank. Uh, so you're just gonna pull that handle and you're gonna let the gray. The idea is the water is a little bit cleaner for the gray, so it's gonna help clean out those, those lines here for you, especially your sewer hose as well. Once you've done that, you're gonna close up both the valves here because that's what you want to do. You don't want anything else coming out. Make sure everything's good and gone and out of there, and then go ahead and put that cap back on. To store your sewer hose, they actually give you nice little squeezies. Your sewer hose will fit inside the bumper here, so uh, just stuff it back in there when you're finished, and you don't have to keep it with your the rest of your stuff. So uh, that is your station. If for any reason, um, it's dark outside when you're emptying because we know what happens to everybody. There is a light out here as well for that. You do have a hot water heater. Uh, that is back here. So, so this is a six gallon uh, Dometic uh, quick recovery hot water heater. There's really not much you have to do outside. Right now we do not have our plug in. So the unit is winterized. Uh, there's no water in the tank. When you go to put the unit back into service, the plug goes back in with some Teflon tape. When the unit is in operation mode, you may have a few drips coming out of your water, uh, yeah. Yeah. water pressure relief valve. Um, so what happens is it'll just drip, drip in operation. And that's just so that there isn't too much pressure inside the tank. Um, so don't ever panic if you do have a few drips coming out of there. It is auto ignition. It will light itself on propane uh, as well as it does have a 110 volt element, which we'll talk about inside. The 30 amp power cord that I just about tripped over is a detachable one, which is kind of nice. So what you'll do, you just twist it on to your trailer when you get to your site. It even has an indicator light that it is getting power. So a little blue light comes on on this trailer so that you know you haven't tripped the breaker on the actual pole itself at the campground, etc. And so that's your 30 amp. Traveland does supply a 15 amp adapter as well. So that'll just plug into your house. If you want to plug it into your house before you get going camping, uh, it'll keep you, you can get your fridge cold before you leave or anything like that. I'm not actually going to walk up onto the roof, but up on the roof, there is some pretty serious maintenance that needs to be done. And it's probably one of the most important things for a trailer. So uh, your roof seals need to be checked at least once a year. We recommend twice to three times a year here at Traveland, uh, just for the sole reason that water is the worst thing that can happen to a trailer. If you've owned one before, you know that. Um, so get up there, check your roof seals. 
They do get dry and deteriorate over time, especially if you're in the sun a lot. Um, RV covers are recommended for the winter time or any time you're not using it for a long time. Summertime, if you're not gonna get out for three, four weeks, put it on in the summertime because that's when the sun really dries out those seals the most. Uh, so check with the parts department on an RV cover for your RV because uh, it will help uh, the longevity of this big investment that you're making. This unit here is wired for your backup camera. So it is wired for Furion backup camera. It is a um, Bluetooth backup camera uh, and will operate through a camera that you mount in your vehicle. Um, again, it's all prepped, plumb, plumbed for it. I believe it takes about an hour for us to install. It's a really quick, easy install. Uh, and that's including showing you how to use it in your vehicle. So something else to check on as well for the parts department. Um, we sell lots of these to folks because it just makes setting up at the campground easier and uh, takes away from all the bickering. You have uh, your furnace outlet here. Uh, really nothing to take into account here other than this gets extremely hot when it is in operation. So don't worry about it. They do have little uh, critter covers for this if you're in an area that uh, you have lots of little mice and things like that. And we all know they love to get anywhere that they can. Uh, you can get little grill vent covers for these if you feel the need. Spare tires just mounted here on the back. Uh, the unit is not provided with a jack uh, or anything like that. Recommend uh, roadside for your trailer and your car, uh, which you can purchase through the business office if you'd like. Uh, they have a product that uh, covers both, which is kind of nice, uh, rather than just your vehicle. Kind of a two in one. The location of this is a bit odd, so I didn't talk about it on the other side, but we're gonna go back to the uh, waste system here. So once you've emptied your black tank and your gray tank, like I talked about on the other side, close both your valves up, but leave your sewer hose attached. Hook up a pressurized uh, water source to here and just let it run for five minutes or so. What that does is there's a little outlet uh, in the end of your, in your black tank and what it does is it kind of, the pressurized water hits it and it kind of shoots water everywhere. It's just gonna help clean your black tank. So run that for about five minutes, then go ahead, dump your black again. And then, as I said, put a little bit of water in with the chemicals that we were talking about earlier. So that is your black tank flush. That blue hose that we had on the other side that we quick disconnected, you can quick connect to this side as well. This is gonna be cold water only. Um, so make sure that uh, you're not trying to give a shower to the kid or the wife or anything like that on that one. It is cold water only. It will work when you spray the nozzle. Um, it is pressurized. You do have to have pressurized water for it, uh, but it'll work good uh, if you need to spray something down on this side of your trailer. I won't get too far into it, but if we get down, uh, basic maintenance on uh, your uh, running system here is uh, bearing repacks are one of the most important things. So Traveland recommends every year or 12,000 kilometers. Uh, you can get away with a little bit longer than that, but make sure that you're doing bearing repacks. At the same time, they will do, they can do brake adjustments uh, and every, uh, a little bit longer than that, um, you'll actually need to replace the shoes on the brakes themselves. So um, bearing repacks, super important. Uh, don't want your, your hubs to seize. Uh, otherwise, that's your running gear, and it's it's uh, pretty simple there. 110 power outlet. Again, anything 110 power outlet looks like an outlet from home. Only works if you're running off of a generator. You have an inverter built into the trailer at some point, or if you are plugged into shore power. Uh, just a cable outlet, just in case you want to bring your TV outside. If you are in a spot where you don't have access to pressurized water, but you wanna fill your tank, you actually still do have a gravity fill, which is really nice. Um, lots of people don't take these to concrete campgrounds anymore. You go into the middle of nowhere uh, and you have a, a good, clean, fresh stream nearby, um, but no way to get the water into your trailer. You can get the five gallon buckets and just gravity fill your tank from here. You can stick the hose in there if you do have pressurized water and it does have a vent, uh, we'll let you know when it is full full because uh, water will start coming out of there. Grab handle, just gonna flip over the door for travel. Uh, helps keep the door uh, tight into position. Obviously lock it as well when you're traveling. 
Your two outside speakers I'll show you how to use when we're inside. Last two things on the outside before we jump inside real quick is your two lights inside your front compartment or motion sensor lights. So just leave those on step one if you want. Uh, they'll shut off uh, after you close the compartment and turn back on when you open it back up. Last thing is your awning. So your awning is a nice big awning on this trailer. Um, it is the uh, LCI Solera. So what it does, which is really neat, is you can actually really easily give it its tilt. Um, I like to tilt one side. It looks kind of funny, I know, but it really gives it a good angle. You can do both sides. That's still going to give it enough. Believe it or not, awnings are actually made for shade, not for rain. We all use them for rain. We know we do. Um, but what happens is if too much water builds up underneath your awning and it's on a nice flat pitch, like the one, the way we had it, it will collapse uh, and you'll probably break an arm. There's a lot of gas struts, etc. So you can just play with these, put it on any angle that you'd like. I do like to straighten them up before I put them back. Before I put the awning back in. But yeah, so your awning's completely adjustable, which is nice. Your LED light strip uh, at the base of the awning there puts out a lot of light at night. Uh, and is you turn it on and off from uh, inside. Come on in with me and let's do the inside. <coughs> okay, so starting first thing right as soon as I walk inside the door, there is my fire extinguisher. Hopefully you never ever have to use it, but you should always know where it's located and it is always right at the front door. Okay, so uh, my blind talk. They are exciting. They are pull down blinds. Uh, I do talk about them because I recommend you travel with them in the up position. The reason that I recommend you travel with them in the up position is if they are in the down position, they are banging around the entire time that you are driving. You're gonna increase your chance of rips, tears, and the tensioner not being as tensioned for as long. So travel in the up position, always recommended. Pro tip number four, I think. <laughs> Michelle's not sure if that was pro tip number four or five. You have all of your manuals right inside of here. So uh, they give you individual manuals. There is really no giant guide to this trailer. Everything is pretty generic on that. But you have an Imagine. This is new and I like this. <sighs> Sweet. Uh, so for all Imagines, it's not going to be forced for floor plan specific, but it's got lots, but you've got all your individual manuals, weight information sheets, fridge, 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 how many fridge? You've got a couple fridges, your flooring, the flooring that they put in it, the congolium. So you got everything in there. That is good for uh, a six pack and a sunny afternoon. Maybe if you drink all six, you won't be reading it after that, but uh, we have couple of lights up front. They are two stage lights. So you have your blue light for ambient light uh, late in the night. And then obviously you have your bright lights as well. Um, you have one on either side there. You have spring assisted. Separate storage from your front pass through storage. Just have to push down sometimes a little bit harder than normal. There's a 110 outlet on that side. And whoever the lucky duck is that gets the left side of the bed, they actually get the 12 volt USBs as well as the 110 volt outlets. So those 12 volt USBs will run off of your battery. Uh, so if you are dry camping, don't have a generator with you, you can still charge your phone and things like that. Hangers on either side, just a couple of drawers. Didn't pop open a top, but some top storage for you as well. This is, I guess we're back to windows, your emergency exit window. So you can operate it like a normal window, just have it open like that. In the event of an emergency though, you are going to pull your red handle, get the screen out of the way, and this window will flip all the way up. It is not on an un unhinged system. Uh, it won't fall to the ground or anything like that if you swing it too far. So that is your emergency exit window and that is how you operate it if you ever need to get out of the trailer. Just a screen to cover your bedroom area if you so choose in this nice small trailer. Right above your head in the bedroom here is the smoke detector as well. That's a nine volt battery operated system. 
Uh, so just make sure that you're changing out the battery from time to time. We'll go right back to the front. I'm doing a terrible job here. I apologize. Getting excited now. I love this trailer. Um, this is your uh, monitor panel, basically. So this is probably the guts and the brains of the inside of this trailer. So Michelle will get really far up and close there and we will operate it. So you have a slide switch in your bottom left. That is just an easy in out system for you. Uh, same with the awning, just in out. Uh, starting with the red buttons there, you have a water pump switch. So if you are dry camping, you've filled your fresh water tank and you need water at the tap. You actually need to pressurize that water in order to get it up to the tap. In order to do that, you are going to turn your water pump on. It is a pressurized water pump, it's on demand. So what'll happen is you turn your tap on, the pump will come on, you turn your tap off, the pump will pressurize itself and then the pump will turn itself off. If in a situation you continue to hear the pump running, you have probably run out of water. It's not pressurizing itself. So just uh, keep that in mind uh, when you are using your water pump. Next to it is your two water heater switches. Uh, the one on the left is gas. Uh, so if you wanna run the hot water tank off of propane, if you're uh, dry camping, don't have electricity, uh, you use your propane, all you have to do is flip the switch. The one beside it is for the 110 volt um, element inside the hot water tank. And all you have to do is flip the switch for that. We don't recommend using both at the same time. Use one or the other. Um, uh, gas usually heats just a little bit faster than the electric, but uh, you can use one or the other depending on your situation. Ceiling light switch, that's gonna be all your main puck lights in your ceiling. And exterior light switch is your uh, LED awning light strip. Right above that, Michelle will back off just a tiny bit. Uh, I'm gonna go back to the gas part. So if we do turn our tank on the gas, you can see the switch light up. I don't have any water on it, so I'm gonna immediately turn it off. But if for some reason the tank doesn't light itself, you don't wanna be concerned or uh, wonder in 20 minutes when it would heat it up, a little light will come on, the, the direct spark ignition had a fault and it did not light itself. So if that light ever comes on, when you flip the water heater on gas, that is why. You'll just have to go outside, check, maybe you're out of propane. Uh, a lot of the time it's very simple. Up above that is the monitor panel that we've been talking about. So this tells you the status of uh, your tanks as well as uh, your battery. So all you have to do is hit the button. We don't actually have a battery on here, but when you're plugged in, it always says full. Hopefully our black tank is empty because nobody's used this trailer. Our freshwater tank is empty and our gray water tank is empty. So you can see the blue light lights up to the level indicated. So if it was a third, that light would come on, but we're empty on everything. So that is your monitor panel. Keep an eye on that when you're using your trailer, especially if you are dry camping so that you don't run out of batteries altogether and so that you don't overflow your tanks. Okay. Audio video, so hopefully you're not using this too often. You're outside enjoying the outdoors, but you do have to have all the good stuff inside these trailers. So this is your uh, radio, CD, DVD, Bluetooth, country music, rap music, whatever you like, you can do it out of this Jensen. Uh, and I'll just see how much I can show you here. So got power on already. Uh, just shut it down for a second. So this is one of your battery drawers that I was talking about. If you don't hit the battery disconnect, it always shows a clock for you, which means it is taking some of your battery life. So I've got it turned on here for us. Uh, I'm going to go, uh, let's, uh, country music, country music, country music. Oh yeah, okay. So, the biggest thing that I can tell you about is you have two speaker zones. You have inside and you have outside. So B is your outside speakers, A is your indoor speakers. Um, so you don't wanna have B on in the middle of the night when you're having a good time inside your trailer and vice versa. If you're trying to be quiet inside the trailer, make sure you don't have A on and B outside on. So uh, you can have them both on, one on, two on, and it just tells you right there. These are your settings. You got AM, FM. That is for CD, believe it or not, if people still own those. Bluetooth, as we just talked about, there is a USB. If you want to plug USB into it, 
as well as an auxiliary right there. So iPods, iPhones, etc. can all be plugged in. It is also your DVD player for your TV. So um, pop a DVD in there, uh, put it onto disc, and you can play DVDs through your TV. TV is on a swivel mount. So of course in a small trailer like that is necessary. So you can watch it from bed if you need to or want to. I'm gonna get Michelle to come around. We're gonna go up high here, right up into the ceiling. So TV plug-in up there. You also have cable in uh, to your TV, or sorry, cable out. Um, and the reason that I wanted to talk about this, if you went portable satellite, uh, you have the hookup right there. But you also have on the roof of this trailer, a digital TV antenna. And what that does is you can still pick up some free TV over the airwaves which is kind of nice. But in order to do that, you have to have that little red light on. Now, if you do have cable vision at the park, you're gonna want that little red light off and my finger can almost reach it right there. So that light needs to be off in order to pick up cable vision at the park. Otherwise your digital TV antenna uh, will scramble the signal coming in from the cable. So. Uh, light off cable vision, light on if you're trying to pick up some free TV over the airwaves. Your table, if you ever want to make the unit into a dinette, or just lower the table for fun, really simple, just a couple of latches, and then it is just a push. You can lock it in the down position. I'm going to go mostly in the down position here. Not all the way because we still have the cushions, but you just have to close them back up to open it back up. You don't really have to lift, do anything crazy. It is a little assisted. Just let it come up. And then just make sure you lock these back into position. When it is in the down position, just put the cushions over the table and that'll make it into a bed for you. Nothing but good, clean storage. More importantly, down below that is your converter charger. So uh, this converts the 110 volt AC into DC that is built into the system. Um, is also your uh, charger as well. Your charger is built into the unit. Uh, all your breaker switches for your 110 volt AC items are on here. Reefer, refrigerator, uh, ground fault, air conditioner, microwave, and uh, water heater are all on here. I always recommend, if something isn't working, this is the first place. Pro tip number five, I think. Always check here if something isn't working first. Second place to check is going to be that fuse that I told you about on the front. Um, when things don't work, it's usually a pretty simple answer. Uh, trip breaker or even a blown fuse. So just, this is for 12 volt stuff. So you can see I just took some lights off. Um, What's nice is if you blow a fuse in this trailer, it actually, a little light comes on. You don't even have to go looking for a, bro a blown fuse. It already tells you that it's blown. It will also tell you that if it's pulled out as well. Um, so check here first if you're having any issues. Light comes on if the fuse blows, which is kind of nice, or a breaker might be tripped. So check in there. The more stuff you have on, the more this fan will run, you'll hear it. Uh, that's just because it is working all the 12 volts inside your trailer. Your LP and carbon monoxide detector, just down here. Another one of those hardwired things that I was talking about, the reasons you disconnect your battery. Um, reason being is that little light will never turn off uh, until you disconnect your battery from the trailer. So uh, it will always be drawing a little bit, but again, that's just for safety reasons. Uh, because you want to make sure that you keep it safe. I did just lie to you, that is just the propane detector. I just noticed that they did a roof mounted, nine volt battery operated uh, CO detector. So that is up here. Um, so same as the smoke detector, just make sure that you are uh, changing the battery on that so that it's operational. Moving on, we're getting there, I promise. You have uh, your thermostat. So this is your mode button at the bottom. It's currently off. We can turn just the fan on. Now the fan is gonna operate out of the air conditioner. It's the fan on the air conditioning system. You can go low, high, 
or you can turn the actual air conditioning on. So cool is gonna be the air conditioning operating. You can hear it kicking on right now. There's two options when you have your air conditioner running. You can do what I call a, a, a quick dump. And so if, this is if these are open right here, basically all the cold air is gonna come straight off your air conditioner straight down and cool your unit only in the middle, but really quickly. Um, if you close these up, you kind of hear there's no more cold air coming out of here and it's gonna start coming out of your ducts. So again, not a huge trailer that we're in right now, um, but if you wanna force more cold air up to your bedroom or back into the bathroom kitchen area, you're gonna close those. If you want a real quick cool down when you get back to the trailer after a long day and it's super hot in here, open those up and let it all just come right off the air conditioner. If I hit that again, a couple more times, those are through the air conditioner, high, low, and auto. Now we found the heat function, so just give it a second to cycle here. Air conditioner is gonna come off, furnace is gonna come on. So we do have heat ducts down in the floor. They're not in the actual floor on Grand Design, which is one of the great features of them. Um, again, you're just gonna set your temperature. We don't have any propane in here, so we're gonna let it do its thing. Don't ever heat your trailer to 99, it would be very hot. Uh, and then one more function is just off, and then that'll just shut everything down. So that is your way through your thermostat. We're into the bathroom now. I'm gonna stand in the shower, make things easy. You got a foot flush toilet. It is porcelain. Again, sorry we haven't had detail going anywhere yet, but down just a little bit is what's gonna give you a function. It's gonna fill the bowl for you. And then all the way down is actually gonna open the ball valve and let you through into the black tank. <coughs> Up above me here is your fan. This is your bathroom fan. It is a manually operated fan. So you do have to twist it to open it. And you do have to press the button to turn it on. Two recommendations would be first, max air covers are recommended always. Reason being, if you leave your vent lid open for travel, it will take a beating and it could fall off, break and get brittle. Also, uh, just for sun over time, the little plastic uh, covers, they get brittle and break down. The covers, the max air covers protect them. So we do have an installation service for those. We do sell them over the counter in parts. The other thing would be a wall mounted switch, fantastic fan. Uh, so it's a fantastic fan is a big bladed fan. It's gonna move a lot more air than the little fans that the trailer manufacturers provide. Um, it's gonna move a lot of air and you also won't have to turn it on and off from here. We could uh, install a wall switch for you there. So um, that's gonna be the same for the kitchen vent. You do have another one of these in the kitchen. Same thing, uh, max, air, uh, max fans or fantastic fans as well as max air covers are, would be recommended for there. So uh, it's just gonna make your life easier and more comfortable. A little bit more storage here for you. There's a toilet paper holder. They don't put that on there for you. They let you decide where you want to put that. I'm standing inside the shower. You have the pull away screen. I can't close it while I'm in here, otherwise I'll get stuck, but um, it's pretty simple. Self-cleaning. It's got a little squeegee in there. So just goes to close. So same thing from this side, you just pull in and that will delatch it when you finish your shower. Showers, same as at home, hot and cold. Got your wand. You can turn your sprayer head on or off, but that is it. There is access to your P-trap for your shower down there if you need it. That's where your two screws uh, pull that off. You get access to your P-trap should it be needed. Down there is just some water lines. Light switches are in here as well. Kitchen area, just cabinet storage. Lots of it though. You have your roll away drying sink, so you can just throw that in the cabinet if you want. Nothing more than storage down here. This, I like this, Michelle, this is easy. Okay, so they even give you a diagram right on the panel that you need to remove for your hot water heater. So. We're not gonna talk winterizing in this video because Traveland has a few winterized videos already up on the website. When you do go to winterize, dewinterize, um, life is pretty simple, just watch that video. But Grand Design takes that to another level and makes it even easier. So you are, for winterizing, you do have to remove these two screws. Uh, this panel is covering the back of your hot water heater, um, which you need access to. 
for uh, normal operation as well as winterization. And that's pretty simple because they literally give you the instructions right on it with a diagram. So that's kind of nice. Your water pump's back there. Everything's back there that you need um, for winterization. So that's new and nice. If you have any questions regarding winterization, always call the dealership. We're always happy to help. Bring it in for winterization. Again, happy to help. Uh, and as I said, we do have the videos on our website as well. So nice big pots and pans drawer. Storage, storage, and storage. Lots of storage for a small trailer. Your Furion oven. Did you bring? I didn't bring a lighter. It's a good thing I don't smoke. Okay, so uh, I will go over the stove top first then, and then I will conceptually explain the oven to you. So, pretty simple though. You're just gonna turn the gas on. You're by pushing in, and you're going to the flame here, and then you're just gonna hit your sparker. Again, I actually don't have propane in this trailer yet, so it's not gonna work, but dial in to the flame, roll your sparker, and it will light itself. So you have three of those, that's for those three there. For the oven itself, it's a little bit trickier. You actually do have to light the oven yourself. So same thing, you're gonna push in and you are gonna go to the flame. While you're still pushing in and going to the flame, you're gonna take a little barbecue lighter and you're gonna go back to your thermocouple here and you're gonna hold your barbecue lighter underneath it for about five seconds or so. So you're lighting a pilot right now. Uh, so you light your pilot, hold it there for about five seconds or so, uh, and then remove your lighter, Keep keeping your fingers on the flame, knob in the entire time. Remove your fingers from the knob, remove the barbecue lighter, and you should have a pilot light running now. Once you have that, just turn it to your desired temperature. Just a couple of light switches for your knobs and your glass cover. Just make sure that uh, it is not running with it covered or they aren't still too hot before you uh, close the glass cover, otherwise you might crack it. crack it. Got a nice big fan. As I said, talked about outside, make sure that outside vent is open. And then just another light there for you. Continuing on in the storage realm, more storage. You do have a spec sheet um, nameplate there. So that has all of your model numbers. Should you ever need parts in the future, they are all right there for you, as well as some weights, the VIN number for your trailer, the build date, etc. Microwave operates just like one would at home. Um, I still don't know how to use mine at home, so I probably don't know how to use this one. Uh, enter the time, hit start, warm up your food, your coffee, your tea. You got it. Uh, handles have changed a little bit since my last walkthrough, but they are simple, just pullouts here and here. Your operation for your fridge is actually inside the freezer section, so that's why I opened everything up here. On, off, I've pushed it in, it's now on. And I, pro tip number seven, I think, always recommend leaving the fridge on in the auto. Auto position is always gonna source electricity first. If it can't find electricity, it will automatically switch over to gas. So rather than running it on gas um, and just running it on gas, even if you know you're not gonna have electricity, it will still source the gas. Um, only time that I would run it specifically on gas if, if is electricity is just too much money at the park. Um, in which case then you just push this in. Uh, and switch it over to gas. So in is auto, which will source electricity first, out is gas, in is on, out is off. I guess we should show the temperature setting. Three is usually pretty good for a Dometic refrigerator. If you find that it's icing up, uh, turn it down. If you find that it's not getting cold enough, turn it up. There is some uh, startup instructions here for you as well. There is a manual on the fridge. It's best operating uh, systems, temperatures, etc., as well. And you'll see on the far right hand side, it's just a little thing right here on this fin. Um, and again, just try to keep that right around the middle uh, and that's gonna keep the fridge operating as best it can. Otherwise, fridge stays cold for six to eight hours if the doors stay closed. So if you are going on a long trip, um, get it cold a couple days before. It does take a while to cool down a fridge. Um, so if it's been sitting in storage for a while, bring it home, get it plugged in, get it cold, 
uh, and then uh, keep the doors closed and it will stay cold while you're traveling to your to campsite. I'm hoping I didn't forget much because I'm probably going to finish here in the chair. You have parachute cords for your chairs uh, and then you have little operators for massage, light, and heat, which aren't working right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pro tip number eight you. Again, when things don't work, there's always a reason. And that reason is these aren't plugged in right now. So just like our fridge outside, I can see that our theater seats also aren't plugged in right now. So uh, if they aren't working, always make sure that they're plugged in. As I said, always usually something pretty darn simple when something isn't working. So you have heat function, light, and massage. Thank you for coming around the Grand Design Imagine 22 MLE with me. I had fun. I talked a lot. I apologize. There's probably lots of questions. Go ahead. Let the parts department know. Call me. I don't mind. Uh, and we will be happy to help you out. If there's any ads, upgrades, or anything like that that I talked about uh, that you'd be interested in before you pick up your trailer, also let us know or before we deliver your trailer. Thanks again for watching. Enjoy your day.